I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to greet you from Pretoria. I'm uh, thrilled to host this session today. Uh, actually, the last session of the first International Poetry Festival, Mexico 2021, La Poesia Salvará el Mundo, which translates into Poetry Will Save the World. And rightly so. Poetry is a privileged way to cultivate humankind. The festival was organized by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Mexico under the coordination of the Cultural Diplomacy Executive Office and Dr. Enrique Marquez, who recently wrote that the cities don't have a quiet consciousness and neither the poets do. Poetry Will Save the World Festival will bring through 10 cities different voices of the world. Our session today was beautifully, beautifully orchestrated by Teresa Espinaza. Uh, she was some, somewhere there in the, on the screen, but I think she, she uh, turned off uh, her screen uh, to have a, a better audio. Thank you, Teresa, for your inspiration and committed work. Thank you very much. The festival was organized within, within the framework of the International Poetry Day in collaboration with UNESCO the Instituto Cervantes, Mexican embassies, and cultural institutes in nine different, different cities or 10, I, uh, okay. I had nine? Okay, nine different cities around the world and the participation of brilliant poets and institutions from Mexico and other countries. The festival started on March 21st, the day when we celebrate in Mexico the beginning of spring. I'm very excited about our session today. In the first place, because of you, and also because we are so lucky that together with this piece, we will be closing the festival. Today, we will have two poets from Mexico and four poets from the University of Johannesburg, South Africa, presenting their work through videos. Additionally, they will take part in a group discussion about transdisciplinary poetry. First, uh, I would like to introduce Mexican poet, Cynthia Franco. Cynthia, I saw you. Hola, Cintia. ¿Cómo estás? Bien, estoy muy bien. Muchas gracias. Eh, estoy muy contenta de estar aquí. I'm happy to be here with all these beautiful people. And I'm from Tijuana. I'm living in Mexico City. As a, I'm going to talk in Spanish because I'm from Tijuana. So. <laughs> <laughs> eh, I, vivo en la Ciudad de México desde hace ocho años. Entonces ya estoy, ya estoy mezclada. I'm a mixed poet. And I do spoken words. So, lo que van a ver ahorita, what you're going to see is uh, my, po my, my, my spoken word. Mi palabra hecha cuerpo. Mm -hmm. Maravilloso. Wonderful. Gracias. We are really looking forward to that. As <laughs> Cynthia says, she's from Tijuana. Tijuana is a vibrant city in our northern border with San Diego in the United States. She does many fascinating things. She was very discreet. But uh, she's deputy director at the Transdisciplinary Center Poesia y Trayecto. She's a multidisciplinary poet, as well as, as spoken word, as she said, practitioner and instructor. She was coordinator of the community project As Un Libro y As Barrio, and the project with a feminist approach, Voces Combativas. She has published the books En Caso de Tristeza, Jale Palanca, No Tengo Lada, and Hatsi. She has been a performer in multiple competitions and festivals. She was winner of the Macro Slam 2017, and she has given workshops for children, young people, and new creatives around Mexico. Let's watch this video to learn more from her and to enjoy her. Dominar la maestría del verbo como quien le echa crema a los tacos sin medida. Porque a la lengua, a la lengua solo se le arriman cuando tiene tunas y de la tuna uno se come hasta la pulpa cuando hay hambre. Sentir esta tierra firme en la garganta, guarache que anuncia cu 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 cumbia, el meritito saludo de nuestro cantinfleo. Porque pues híjole, una cosa es una cosa y otra cosa es otra cosa. Entre tanto descubrimos el desencanto de quien es mezquino al hablar y ni con lobas anda ni aullar se enseña. Pero aquí nosotros y nosotras, vestidos de terciopelo muy elegantes, nos abrimos suavecito. 
Suavecito, suavecito. Nos abrimos suavecito todo el flow para hacer carnada. Y a veces, pero casi siempre, dejamos que nos corra la conexión con la manada cuando escuchamos el... Un saludo para esta palapa. Negrita, ven, prende la vela. Negrita, ven, prende la vela. Pero viene, 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 viene el carnal que dealer suelta su slang. Este es mi barrio, el mero río del delirio. Cuando respiro y abrigo un poco de smog al corazón. Salsa hembra con un toque de quédate tantito. Chuntareo, un tarareo de verso cantadito. Nomás por ser migrante te dejo ver hacia adelante. Un toque de ajo y ajo. Qué rica gloria de abrirse la victoria. Si a zarpazos, albores y pregones he llegado hasta mi manada. El barrio me respalda cuando no le doy la espalda. Nada. Yo nomás quiero una bailada, carnal, una slameada, que apenas son las ocho y todavía no cantamos el himno nacional. Y sí, escuchamos el alarido en el gemido de nuestro lecho. Arde el vientre y nos doblega a ser jauría. Las espinas entre las manos destoblan nuestra palabra. In the other side, our word is like capulque. Pura guamiel, bebida de los dioses, alambre de los que usan el sombrero. Because I don't speak in English very well, but aprendemos rápido porque en one dollar yo he repartido a tole, porque incluso somos más mexicanos que el pulque. De norte a sur nos vamos a saborear de tanto albur, porque nada sabe nuestro violín, pero todos los sones te tocamos. El acordeón para todas partes. Si preguntan de dónde venimos, diremos mejor... Pues a dónde me llevas, a tole chile y picante nos tendrán aquí constante. Nos guía el incienso de la tribu. Salivamos la palma de Mayagüel echando chiflido, chichichá y chasquido. Desgastamos el petate. A quien nos enseña tributos con su agave o se la sabe como te la chiquero. Pa comer aquí y pa llevar comiendo. Estas manos parten, se reparten y disponen la semilla. O dime tú, o tú. ¿A poco nunca te han bailado, te han quitado la malilla? Nuestro verbo entrega ruda a los entierros porque nosotros hablamos desde dentro. Te ercas como chinche, aflojamos el metate y decimos... ¡Ay, hablador! ¡Compónmela en el aire! Ya si nadie nos entendió ni un cuarto de lo que estamos diciendo, pues respondemos. Entonces, ¿qué güero? ¿A poco mis enchiladas no tienen queso? Thank you, thank you very much. Dressed in velvet, our world is like pulque. A ver, güero, compónmela en el aire. Cynthia, I wanted to be there, moving, dancing, feeling el ritmo del slang del barrio. Muchas gracias por invitarnos a ser parte de tu obra. Me encantó tu video. Thank you very much, gracias. Now, I would like to introduce Mexican poet Rojo Córdoba. Rojo, ¿cómo estás? Hey, hola, ¿qué tal? Me da mucho gusto hola. conocerla, embajadora. Igualmente, so me encanta. Es tan all of you guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Ya, yeah. mm -hmm. well, eh, Rojo Córdoba es un poeta eslamero. Rojo es a chilango, as we say, uh, we call the people who were born in Mexico City. And he's a poet performer, workshop leader, cultural manager, promoter, producer, and anthologist, actor, and writer, focused on exploring the possibilities of orality, hip hop, and interdisciplinary lyricism. He's one of the major advocates of poetry slams and spoken word in Mexico. His work includes poetry, as well as participations in theater productions, such as Monster Truck by Richard Viqueira and El Paraíso o La Vida Pasada en Limpio by Ruben Ortiz, and in films such as Hecho en México by Duncan Bridgman, Somos Lengua by Kitsa Terrazas, and the documentary Machos de César Chiquito. He also did the wiki poema, Rampante, sound installation at the Centro de Cultura Digital, 
among many other artistic activities. A continuación, un video collage realizado por Rojo Córdoba. No creo que todo sea poesía, más bien creo que todo puede ser poetizable. Solo tiene que llegar el poeta, la poeta, lo poeta y crear, pasando, pasándolo por su filtro. Ahora, ¿qué es lo poetizable? Lo más alto y sagrado, lo más bajo y vulgar y todo lo que está en medio. Pero reitero, precisamos que llegue el poeta a cantarlo, a señalarlo. No creo, por otra parte, que la poesía no sirva para nada. Más bien creo que sirve para todo. Tan sirve para todo que hasta puede llegar a servir para nada. Toda la obra es como una especie de partitura donde tiene que ver la voz, el cuerpo y todo tiene que ver con este ensamble, este beso imposible. Termina el partido, Pumas campeón en el torneo de clausura 2009, marcador global, 3 goles a 2, siguiente día, recorría 12 del día, comienza el recorrido para darle la vuelta. Serle, tú lo aplicaste padrísimo en el hip hop, yo lo aplico en el spoken word, en la literatura, en los performance, en los talleres, y se trata de eso, ¿no? Como... Toma, permitimos que la gente se divorcie como si fuera un juego. Rova es una central figura en el mundo de la mexicana slam poetry. Rojo, welcome in Belgium. ¿Qué es lo que perform aquí? I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm really scared to see what all the people is going to react from, I don't know, for my work, for my words, for the sound. Farmacogenomica, farmacogenomica, farmacogenomica. Una estrofa que se genera de repente en la noche y en la oscuridad. El texto es, rápidamente te muestro todo esto que saco de aquí de mi mente para que tú ya lo tengas y sepas realmente con quién te metes. Polipropileno, mailar papel, bot. Mi voz tatuando el flor de la piedra, la cruz y el cemento. City, so all the time we got this kind of pom 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 pom. We got a lot of rhythm, we got a lot of sounds. So the Belgian link is about honoring this chaos. Toda enchida de amor. Y bueno, y bueno, si no entendiste nada de lo que dije, y aunque hayas entendido todo, quédate con esto. Antes que nada y después de todo, la poesía eres tú. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you, Co thank you, Rojo. It is fascinating the way in which you generate different dialogues, the way you use different tools. How do you go from one discipline to the other in expanded spaces? Muchas gracias, Rojo. I enjoyed very much uh, watching your video. To present the South African poets, I will give, uh, to, to, uh, sorry, um, and to introduce the South African poets, I will give the floor to Carabo Michali, Operation Manager and Producer Arts and Culture of the University of Johannesburg. Welcome, Carabo, how are you? Hi, Ambassador, thank you so much. We are very honored to be here. I am great, thanks. I hope you are too. Um, so I'm Karam Mchali, as you mentioned, I'm the operations manager of UJ Art, uh, Arts and Culture, but I'm also an artist. I was actually artistic directed, I curated the videos for three of the poems that we're going to see. 
Um, and just to tell you a little bit more about us is UJ Arts and Culture is a division of the Faculty of Art, Design and Architecture. And what we do is we, pre we present an extracurricular program through our Arts Academy, where we present drama, poetry, dance, um, music and various other arts appreciation programs and we are really really honored to be here and so excited to be invited here. I'd really like to hand over to Quaz um, who is the facilitator of the poetry program and he can tell us more about the program and about the poems as well because he conceptualized the whole thing for a poetry festival called the Izimbongi festival which we do every year that we had last year. Great. Quaz? Good to see you. Good I've to been see you too. You. I've, been, I've been reading about you. I was watching your, the, the work you do is, is fascinating as well. All yours, the floor is all Thank yours. you very much, Ambassador. I, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Kwaz Roet. I'm a poet and uh, the facilitator and coordinator of the poetry program for the University of Johannesburg Arts Academy. And um, the, the program that we run is a nine month long program basically uh, developed to help young poets earn the skills to become better poets. Uh, throughout the year, we do different workshops with them. We do different classes, different exercises, and all of that is, is scaffolding towards doing a big performance at the end of the year where they will turn the, 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 the poems that they have written into an actual performance, which usually would be the Izimbongi Festival, but because we had a year um, that, uh, was you know completely changed by the pandemic uh, we decided to go online with our festival and we we asked our students to do the same with their poetry so instead of physically being there to migrate online with the rest of the world and to present their poems in video form and what happened then was we decided that uh, um, we will take some of the best poems that were written specifically around the pandemic which was one of the themes that we covered throughout the year and uh, Ms. Karabo uh, had the, the, the creative freedom to create the beautiful videos that we are about to have a look at. Uh, I just want to introduce the young poets that uh, we will be seeing right now. Tumelo Mutimkulu, forgive me. Uh, he has a standalone poem that was really amazing, came out I think two weeks ago online and I think the entire South African poetry community that was online at the time was really stunned by the beauty of this poem. And I was so proud because he is a student at the University of Johannesburg and he did this completely out of his, um, his own doing. He, he didn't wait for anyone to ask him to do it. It wasn't curated by anyone. And then he submitted to a slam and he actually did very well. So he is a South African writer, a poet, a visual artist born in Germiston, Johannesburg. Um, and he is currently studying towards a degree in visual art at the University of Johannesburg. And then Bonolo Masejo. She is a 22-year-old 20 year student at the University of Johannesburg, currently studying her postgraduate diploma in accounting science. And her poem is titled, My Mother's Home. Next up, we have Tariro Chakwakwama. She is a poet, a writer, and she's currently studying towards a master's in international law. She had a very beautiful poem. Her interpretation of the pandemic was fairy tale. And that's the title of her. And then, Padrai Mutare, poet, painter, mentor for girls, SA. She's currently studying a BCom honors in finance and planning. Her poem is titled, These Walls. My mother's home. On the 26th of March, I boarded a taxi to my mother's home. A global pandemic sent us rushing to my mother's home. Reminding me of a certain biblical scripture where an angel appeared to Joseph and said, get up and flee to Egypt with the child and his mother. The angel said, stay there until I tell you to return because Harold is going to search for the child to kill him. And in this case, I am that child. A five to six hour trip turned to ten hours of being contained, uncomfortably sitting between two bigger men, gasping for air, trying not to breathe, music too loud, snacks everywhere, and those awkward stares. I eventually arrived. 
We took the mountain route with its dark, dodgy, and dangerous shadows, and thus, my mother's home. My mother's home is surrounded by people who look and sound and feel like her. My mother's home is far and deserted, and always speak of old tales once travelled by her. My mother's home is my favourite holiday destination, a cornerstone for family gatherings and festive celebrations. My mother's home was once a church, and I'm sure the prayers prayed there reached heavens and returned in floods of blessings. My mother's home gave birth to my womanhood. My mother's home is my home. Fairy tales. This year I wanted a fairy tale. It wasn't a lot to ask for. I felt like fairy tales have eluded me in the past. The way sand sips through your fingers, this year I wanted a fairy tale. Instead, I got locked down the walls, staring back at me like they are my fairy tale. Instead of a fairy tale, I know now that death is real. Death is outside, they say. We're told to stay in our homes, I always knew death was out there. Never thought it would be as close and menacing as the breath of rotting sewer pipes. And death is leaving a million fingerprints globally. Death is not an abstract principle, never was anyway. It is a pungent smell, causing anxiety to all. This is not the fairy tale I had in mind, but every day we are alive is a fairy tale bigger than what I had imagined. Every breath we draw in and the hugs we share in our minds with those dear to us is a fairy tale I'm grateful for. This evening I felt my walls caving in. Coming closer with louder whispers, the more I took a breath in. I tried to hide within, but without a white light, I could not imagine my way in. I tried to breathe out, but the cages in my chest pressed tighter on my skin. I tried to tap out, but the voices kept screaming, you can win, you can win. This time there was no gin. To sober my drunk thoughts, there was no quick fix of why to break me in. My breath so thick, air so thin. My heart drummed my chest while my tears played violin. Tearing through my thoughts just to lick my skin. I know this adrenaline a state I've once been. My head just spins and this devil just grins. The sun calls my melanin and I want to go outside. And I know there's an invisible war, and now that these walls are a forced home, being sane seems more sin than a cough. Just please, just let me open the door. At least on night like these, when my walls cave in, and anxiety threatens to have no mercy when it butchers my skin. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Grass. Uh, you should feel, uh, well, you were very discreet in, 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 uh, in, in saying that you're just a poet, but you're, you're just a <laughs> talented man, an inspiration and as aspiration. You were like the top 100 uh, people, according to independent uh, newspapers, so to independent media. So uh, it's really fascinating to, to, to see the, the work you've done. Really, really. I enjoyed it very much. Uh, there's a, a poem, Beware. I, I enjoyed it very much, the video of Beware. Uh, so, well, uh, thank you for, for these wonderful videos. I think it has been, uh, I, I, I would ask you if, how has it been the experience of writing in Pandemia I enjoyed very much. They are very powerful, your poems. They, they I mean, I felt them in the skin. I mean, they, it's uh, this sense, uh, this sensation of being locked down and, and the walls and home, my mother's home, it's my home. Fairy tale as well, because this is a kind of fairy tale, a little perverse 
I'm not fairy tale, <laughs> uh, because it's really, we haven't lived something like this, and it's worldwide, it's very, very strange. And to Melo, also, uh, your, your poem is, is very, is, 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 is strong, is, uh, uh, I, I, I really was uh, very impressed with your talent, with the talent of you all, and I very much appreciate your, your willingness, your disposition, your enthusiasm to share a conversation, this conversation, and your experiences with Mexico, with our two poets, uh, uh, because I think this is the way we get to know each other better, we can have a, an intercultural dialogue, we have a conversation, we will learn from each other, and uh, actually we can do synergies in the future to, to, to really work together, to do something together, like uh, bicultural experiences, by poetry uh, experiences. That would be something that uh, I would love to see happening after this uh, meeting, this gathering, this reunion, because it's much more than a session. For me, it's a, it's a reunion of uh, different people, diverse people, but at the same thing, we are, we are willing the same things. We are really looking forward to, to, to having peace, to, have, to having well-being, to be, to be happy at the end of the day. So, well, Quas, uh, with no further <laughs> preamble and, and words on my side, let's get started with this conversation. Thank you for facil facilitating this conversation with me. Yeah. So, um, what I would like to do is uh, have the, the three poets in particular, uh, Fazai, Tariro, and Bunola Mashejo, um, think around uh, the inspiration for this, for the, the, the direction they took in terms of interpreting what the prompt was. And I just want to know from, from all three of you, um, how did you get to my mother's home or fairy tale or these walls? And what was the inspiration behind interpreting the poem that way? Bonola, we'll start with you. Hello, everyone. Um, so um, my inspiration for the poem was that, um, so when the national lockdown started, we went, to, we, we went with my family to the villages, which is where my mother grew up. So just being in that uh, surrounding, you know, seeing the people that she grew up with, you know, where she used to sleep and like being in that place, it just inspired me and made me realize that, you know what, I can connect to this place because somehow this is also like a part of me because this is where my mom grew up. So that was kind of like the inspiration for the poem. And then I just basically started it from leaving and then how the journey was and then arriving and uh, realizing that, oh my gosh, this is a beautiful place and I belong here as well. So yeah, that, that's from me. That's beautiful. I love how poetry sometimes becomes a mirror and it shows you exactly what you've not been looking at, even though you are the very beautiful thing that you are walking past or the place that you are living in. So beautiful answer there. Um, Tariro, how did you get to fairy tale? <laughs> Um, how I basically go to fairy tale is that honestly last year I wasn't expecting a pandemic. I don't think anybody was actually expecting a pandemic to be honest. Um, I had my life set. Honestly, I had my own goals. I was looking for fairy tales. I was just looking to better my life and everything. Um, and then the pandemic hit and it happened and I was just like, okay, so what is this? I was actually not expecting a pandemic, but this is what I got. But then you realize that, okay, um, with COVID-19 and everything that happened, actually being alive and just having the people that you love around you, supporting you and everything, it's actually a fairy tale in and of itself. So yeah, that's how I actually wrote my poem. Yeah. Beautiful interpretation of the... Uh of the, the prompt that was given for that writing exercise. The poem itself was really beautiful as well. It's striking. But mm -hmm. you wrote these walls. Tell us how, you, <laughs> how you, you came to the final version of that poem. Hi, everyone. Hi, Quaz. <laughs> Hi um, I think, you know, the pandemic affected us all in different ways. Um, but for me personally, like Tara said, no one expected a pandemic. And last year for me was the year I was supposed to, you know, finish my undergrad, um, you know, explore, do everything I wanted to do, paint and all of that. So I'm the kind of person that 
draws inspiration from being around people, going places, attending my poetry classes with my fellow academy mates. And um, when the lockdown hit, I was at home. So my parents are those parents that say, if you're not going anywhere, you are not going anywhere. So they were like, um, during the level three, the level one, the level five, sorry, the level five, um, that we aren't going anywhere. So I was in the house for three months, for three whole months, I didn't leave my father's house. So um, I then um, started feeling a little drawn away from, you know, society. Um, I felt disconnected to the people that I love, the things that I love. And um, yo, this makes me so emotional because it was so hard. <laughs> So the day I wrote this poem, um, I was actually in my room and I felt like I was going to have a panic attack. And I just felt like these walls were looking too familiar. I just wanted to go outside. You know, that's why I wrote the line, um, you know, the sun is calling my melanin, you know. Um, yeah. So finally, when, when I actually said, you know what, this is how I'm going to deal with it. I'm finally going to write. Um, it actually did help me, you know, to really start putting my emotions to paper, you know, recording, you know, my experiences of, you know, the pandemic. Um, that's actually how I managed to go through the lockdown. So, yeah. Yeah. I think the, the beauty of being an artist is that everything informs us. And throughout mm. this year, throughout this entire year, there was this one, one big thing that we all globally look towards and it's, it's um, interesting to see how, how different people interpreted it differently and how those experiences manifest in the poems, you know? But I want to talk specifically um, to, to Melo and uh, Karabo because uh, Karabo, you were responsible for one, sourcing the images uh, for these videos and the video, video um, 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 uh, compiling it and editing it into the final version of, of, of what we still saw earlier on. Uh, what was your thinking around that and what, how do you maneuver around taking text and then turning that into images and making sure that the images are fully representative of the text? And I guess I'm asking the same question also to, to Melo because to Melo, your video is striking. Um, the poem itself can stand alone without a video because it's so well written um, and so nuanced and also so true. But the video itself is so striking and those images are, are really draw you into the poem. So I want to ask the two of you, um, what is that process and, and how do you navigate between this is the right thing to do, this is the wrong image to put in, does this convey the message, does it not? Um, Karabo, can you maybe talk us? No, no, no. Let's do Tumelo first and then Karabo, you can, um, you can answer after him. Um, well, with me, I... I... I, I, I would like to say I think in images because I'm also a visual artist. So, and I, I basically, in my head while I'm writing my poem, you could say I already have like an imagery of, the, of what I would like the poem to look like in a visual format. So, I just basically, I, instead of like, because I, I've seen a lot of people tend to do this, they tend to separate their practices. Instead of doing that, I merge the two. I merge writing and also um, the visual artist in me. So essentially, I encapsulate, I encapsulate both these things and, and turn it into one. And yeah, I would like to say it, it, it is an interesting pro process. Um, sometimes I don't always, it doesn't always work out, but when it does, it really does. And I appreciate that and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Now look, it, it worked out. We, we were all impressed with, with the video and I hope that those that saw it a little earlier um, will feel the same and check out more of the work that you have been putting out online. Um, Karabo, so you had the, 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 the task of making these videos look good what was your process and also what what demons did you have to wrestle to to get the final perfect product um so i apart from the producing work that i do at uja arts and culture i am a production designer and i do av design for theater productions so fortunately at least, at least the process was something that was familiar however mm -hmm. it was it was very difficult choosing some of the, 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 the videos because obviously what you see on the video is my interpretation of their poems. So I think the biggest challenge that I had was to stay true to their poems and to, so I grappled with that a lot when I put a video in and I was like, but 
is this a happy moment or is it not a happy moment? So that was my biggest challenge, kind of trying to get into the poet's head. And actually, it's, it's a tough task because I have to do another artist's work justice, you know, right. using yeah. other artists' images. So I try to really be creative. There are some places where I got pictures that were like quite on the nose, very clear, where it talks about death and I show a skull. But for the most part, I tried to be abstract and not obvious and, you know, like pick things that were metaphors. So in like my mother's home, um, there's a part where Bonolo talks about the journey and being between these two big men and whatnot, you know. So there, I, I, I just have an image. In my head, I was like, surely that feels like suffocating. And then I started looking for images hands. of suffocation mm. as opposed to, yes, with the hands, as opposed to trying to find a video with two big men. You know what I mean? So where I could play, I really, really played. And also what I loved about bringing the video elements, all the videos were found on pixels.com was just how in sort of metaphorically or in a spiritual way, other artists, it feels like other artists were involved because these videos were a festival. And I mean, the festival, you know, we would have hired a whole lot of people. There would have been so many people involved in bringing the thing together. So I, I just felt like spiritually, we inviting the other artists who've created this content to help us tell these stories, these beautiful stories by these poets. Mm. Lovely, but I mean, you did an amazing job. And um, uh, the poets wrote amazing poems. And I think for, for the nature of collaboration, you know, when, when, when taking what you think is your artistic input and someone else's and merging it, and, you know, finding that sweet spot, I think that's exactly what we managed to achieve with these videos. And um, yeah, a big congratulations to the young poets who wrote throughout the year. Uh, survived the pandemic and at the end of all of that managed to chisel out some beautiful poems for us. So a big thank you to all of you and also to Tumelo who is taking so much initiative as a young poet, younger than 20, um, doing a whole lot of amazing work as well out here in the Johannesburg poetry scene. A lot of people these last few weeks have been talking about his exceptional writing. So um, I would like to say to you guys, you are a beautiful representation of what the South African voice looks and sounds like. And I'm very happy to have uh, you right here on the spot with me. Ambassador, over to you. You're on mute, Ambassador. <laughs> this happens. Okay, uh, thank you, Kwas, and uh, thank you, Carabo, because the images are really, really, um, reflect uh, in every single poem the the, the feeling the the feeling of uh, uh, enclosement uh, uh, asphyxiating in, in in a way some of them with the walls but the other is the journey and it's much more fresh and it's the the a getaway and um, I I really like the, the the images you put the snail also it's a it's a very powerful image. Um, uh, I think uh, this combination of video and poems, uh, it's really uh, fascinating, interesting. And uh, I would like to go back to what Tumelo said uh, before uh, and, and his work actually, the work he did in, in his poem. Uh, most of the videos that are our guest poets screen today, uh, in those of them, we were able to see examples of of ways in which poetry is developed into many forms through the mix of different artistic expressions and delivery methods. We see performances, music, TikTok, Instagram, and other elements that are innovative and new to traditional poetry. Are we talking about a sort of transcreation spaces? How is this happening? How is this uh, incorporated into a poet's, poet's uh, creative process nowadays? And how is this mixed bag of tools transformed into poetry? These are some of the questions that I would like to, to put on the table and throw it there to you uh, in order to incentivate a kind of uh, discussion, dialogue uh, between, uh, among you, uh, among, uh, among ourselves. Why don't we start uh, with Cynthia? What is your feeling about it? Uh, uh, did you get all these ideas you want me to, 
to go to Spanish, to switch to Spanish in order to make this uh, more clear? Yes, Cynthia, oh, you're okay with that. Uh, sí, perfecto. Yeah, Spanish and English is perfect for me. <laughs> okay. Perfect, yeah. <laughs> Perfecto. It, it's, it, la idea es un poco de tener una discusión sobre, sobre esta transdisciplinariedad en la, en la poesía, la combinación de disciplinas, cómo pasan de una a otra, cómo usan estos recursos para expresar algo, eh, no son, es, son formas innovativas, innovadoras de la poesía que no estábamos acostumbrados a ver y ahora lo vemos en estos videos que han presentado ustedes. ¿Cuál, estamos este, creando otros espacios, eh, son, son transgresores ustedes, son innovadores, son transformadores. Eh, ¿Qué es lo que los, los motiva? I'm sorry, I, I, switch, I, I will switch now to English and if Cynthia goes in Spanish, that's fine. I can help you out with, uh, with the language. Feel free to, to, to talk in Spanish or English, you, you choose. Perfect, thank you. Yes, I'm, uh, I'm gonna say this in Spanish in, in, uh, because it's important for the language and the words that I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna talk in Spanish and then I'm, I'm gonna try to mix in English. Um, sí, la poesía aquí eh, para mí es comunidad. Para mí representa un ritual, no solamente interior, no solamente es para, para salvarme, no solamente es como un proceso de catarsis personal, sino que la poesía se vuelve un proceso para nosotros, ¿no? para todos, para todas, para todos aquí. ¿no? Entonces, en ese sentido, eh, sí rompe con las barreras de del interior, ¿no? Si rompe con, con el solamente como en este espacio donde me hablo a mí, sino que también sale a la calle, ¿no? En ese sentido, pues, eh, vamos a escuchar también en lo que presenté al principio, que es una poesía que usa lenguaje muy callejero. La palabra, me dio mucha risa que al principio <risa> eh, decías la palabra pulque y todas estas eh, albures, refranes, que yo digo bastante, ¿no? En este poema que presentamos, porque para mí la poesía es un performance, ¿no? La poesía está llevada al cuerpo, está llevada a todos estos nuevos lenguajes que también son eh, desde la afuera. La poesía para mí se escribe todo el tiempo, se escribe desde que salgo a comprar un tamal, se escribe cuando salgo a, por el pan, o se escribe en cualquier momento. En ese sentido, pues la poesía para mí sí está muy apegada a, a que sea en un lenguaje que todos puedan entender, ¿no? Que todos puedan, si lo escucha mi abuela, si lo escuchan en Tijuana, si lo escuchan aquí en México o en cualquier lugar, que pueda ser comprensible. Eh, por ejemplo, aquí quizá no todos hablamos el español, pero también pueden entenderlo por la sonoridad o pueden entenderlo por la manera en la que lo interpreto con el cuerpo. Entonces, a mí me interesa eso también, ¿no? Cómo se puede transmitir con la mirada, cómo se puede transmitir eh, con los movimientos o, o, o cómo esta de nombrar albures o refranes puede ser una manera también de, de, de nombrar, no sé si llamarle como el, el gueto, ¿no? Como esta, esta, estas formas uh -huh. eh, muy culturales o muy representativas de la Ciudad de México, ¿no? Y que los pueden conocer en otros países. Para mí eso es importante, que puedan darle, eh, conocer o acercarse a mí aproximarse a través de mi palabra, ¿no? A través de estos otros lenguajes que también, pues sí, son de toda la comunidad, ¿no? Son de la calle, son de, del barrio, ¿no? Por así decirlo. Entonces, sí, sí es transgresora, creo, ¿no? También tiene, creo que la primera transgresión es justo utilizar el cuerpo, porque ya es un lugar vulnerable nombrar. Ahora nombrarlo con todo tu cuerpo creo que te pone en un lugar más vulnerable, ¿no? Entonces, aquí, aquí sí mucho esta manera salvaje de hacer aplicado todo y, y es performativa, ¿no? Pero también es eh, pues sí, ¿no? Es un acto que así nace, ¿no? Porque nace también siendo slam, nace en cualquier lugar, nace para cualquier persona y nace en la calle, ¿no? Nace en cualquier momento, aquí mismo puede ocurrir, ¿no? En este instante. Entonces, sí, ¿no? En ese sentido creo que la, pues rompe, rompe las barreras y, y hablando particularmente de la pandemia, pues sí, 
en efecto creo que no lo esperábamos, pero también creamos nuevas maneras de comunicarnos creando slams virtuales, ¿no? Si no podíamos hacerlas en la calle o no podíamos hacerlas en espacios públicos como se acostumbra, eh, acostumbramos aquí. Y también esto se vuelve un momento de escucha, ¿no? Ahora mismo estamos mezclando lenguas, yo estoy en español, pero también es una manera de, ¿no? Este mismo provocar esta charla ya es, ya es un, un momento de escucha, ¿no? Ya es un momento de acercamiento y de proximidad, que es lo que busca la palabra, ¿no? Es lo que busca la poesía, el poder nombrarnos. Entonces creo que hasta sería bueno hacer una recopilación de todos los textos de pandemia que se generaron. Sería bien interesante porque en estos slams virtuales que estuvimos organizando, justo esto se, se revelaba, ¿no? Como estas formas de catarsis constantes que surgían en el AD. Entonces, sí, o sea, como que era, era importante para nosotros, o para mí también seguir generando estos espacios, ¿no? De la palabra, eh, a través de la virtualidad, o de la forma en la que sea posible, ¿no? La poesía siempre va a ocurrir. Ah, uh -huh. oh, tu micrófono creo que está apagado. Again, I'm going to try to, to translate uh, uh, or to share with you what Cynthia just said. It's uh, beautiful how did she explain, but I will do my best to share with you uh, these important words. She says, uh, I was asking her about the transgression and uh, how transformative poetry could be. Uh, poetry for her is community. It represents a ritual, not only an interior process, a catharsis. Poetry becomes a process to all of us, breaks with obstacles, spaces, it goes out, it goes beyond. Language is slam. Poetry is a performance. Um, it is a, the language of the body as well. Poetry uh, is written in any language. That a, a, a language that everybody can understand. You can understand the body language, the sounds, um, the, the, the slang. Uh, do you get this word, the slang, uh, in the townships or the neighborhoods or the ghettos? No. Uh, it's a way to, to call the, the ghetto, the cultural representations of the city, of the groups. Uh, be close through the language, the words, the, the, the words uh, enable us to be close, enables proximity. Transgression, yes, it is transgression because it starts with using the body. There's uh, where transgression starts. It is transformative. Slam is born in the street. In, in, uh, the integrative uh, effort born, uh, is born in the street. We are a combination of languages. So language creates a moment of proximity. We are able to name ourselves. Uh, she suggests to, to gather all the, the, the poems that were written uh, during the pandemic in order to, to learn from what were the feelings uh, in, uh, in the pandemic through the poems that you wrote and others also wrote or performed or TikToked or uh, someone, something like that. Thank you, Cynthia. And uh, Rojo, what, what is your, your, what do you feel about this? What is your opinion about this? Love. It's all about love. love. <laughs> it's all about love, survival. You know, uh, sometimes languages are like trouble, troubled waters sometimes, because not just the, the language, but, but also the technology. This right now is not a black mirror, it's a brown mirror. So right now, if you don't hear me, if you get interference, that's the mirror of my country. <laughs> that's the mirror of my peripheric situation. Right now, because of the pandemic, I am at the periphery, you know, at the suburbs in Mexico City, and we don't have a really good internet. And so right now we got uh, very limited resources to express ourselves. And in order to, for example, to give workshops or do a lot of events, we really need a good Wi-Fi. And that's why we need to travel through one of the largest cities in the world, that is Mexico City. Hope you, hope you know it soon. 
I don't know, in 2024, maybe it's going to be safe. But, <laughs> but we are going to expect you with, with our open arms in 2024 when we are all vaccinated uh, and we are give you a lot of love. But the thing is right now, we are in a horrible crisis. Everybody here is like committed suicide. I mean, in the cultural field, this is a total emergency. And you can see it, for example, the next Women March, the 8th of March, you're going to see the city burn out because it's also a, a great crisis of violence here in Mexico against women, against trans women, against LGBT communities. So right now with the pandemic, everything is far from worse. Right now we need love, we need survival, and we don't have the tools to achieve it. Right now in Mexico, we got 2.5 million um, children left, and they have left education because they don't have access to internet. They don't have Wi-Fi because of the pandemic, because of the pandemic, because of the lack of work of their parents. And right now we are in the state of emergency here in Mexico, in general, in Mexico City in particular. And let's not talk about the little towns. It's a horrible situation right now. And the poetry, uh, for example, I'm doing it through TikTok, for example, mm -hmm. because it's, um, it's a way to get closer to the new audiences that are locked out, uh, that are locked down. They, they are like, <laughs> they are like in jail right now. They are like children. But you know, for example, here my nephew, uh, he got eight years old and he is like here in a jail. <laughs> you know, he can go to the school, he can see uh, his little uh, pulse, he can see, uh, his teacher, his school, and this is a state of emergency. We are in a state of survival. And so the poetry for me right now <laughs> is an act of radical love. We need radical love. And even though we don't have a really good Wi-Fi, really good Wi-Fi, we need love. And that's my message. <laughs> we really need love <laughs> and food. Yeah, and that's what I need to say. And actually, Anna, I got uh, again your your microphone. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. I'm I'm bad at doing that. <laughs> I haven't oh, learned. Don't the worry. Don't I worry. haven't it's learned a... the lessons of pandemics. I get so excited that I forgot forget to to turn on my. It's a new. It's a new reality. <laughs> exactly, and we have to to get used to it. But take advantage of it as well, as you say. I mean, poetry is radical love. I totally coincide with you. And that is why the title of uh, this festival is so fortunate, no? Uh, poetry will save us. And I agree that we have to go back to our values, to our uh, reflection, uh, love, solidarity. So we are for that, definitely. And this group, uh, are, we are here to do that, to exchange views, as you did now. Um, Kwaska, uh, do you want to, to, to facilitate um, the, to give the floor to, to, to the poets? Uh, yeah. For Carabo. Um, as you feel, this is really very yeah. informal. The idea is just to, sh to share our thoughts, our feelings. Yeah. Uh, what is the motivation? Yeah. What does uh, what Rojo and Cynthia say that motivates you? I mean, what reflection yeah. comes or thoughts? Whatever you want to say. Uh, I'm very intrigued by the idea of poetry will save us. Um, I think, if anything, I'm a perfect example of exactly that. Like choosing to become a poet and avoiding absolutely everything else that my friends back home went through people my age, um, people in my community. Um, but that, that could have been painting as well. It could have been ballet. It could have been uh, uh, dancing. It, it, you know, uh, for me, the beauty is finding the healing in the art that you are practicing, but finding the healing for yourself. And I think the, the, what, what this year in particular has, has, has taught me in terms of how I'm reading poetry or, or consuming poetry, that these are not just words pasted together in the perfect order. 
These are pieces of a person's life, their soul, their experiences, and those bits are represented in these words that are on this page. And I think the importance of, of, of using art also as an outlet in situations um, like, I mean, Mexico City, Johannesburg City, Cape Town City, um, Rio de Janeiro, really any of these, these, these um, cities that are vibrant and full of life. Uh, once a sense of community is ripped away from us, then you are left to, to confront yourself and confront uh, whatever it is you think you are or who you are becoming. Um, I think poetry becomes a perfect vehicle for you to navigate through that path. Um, poetry asks you, if you are writing poetry about LGBTQ, um, the LGBTQ community, for instance, when you are writing the poem, that poem asks you, where do you stand? Are you guilty of the things that you are writing about? If you are writing a poem about racism, uh, if you are writing a poem about misogyny, the poem itself, no matter what you say, before you write the poem, the poem asks you, where do you stand? And I think it's a beautiful way of interrogating yourself. Now, I always say this to folks, poetry doesn't necessarily change the world, but it can change a person's world. And for me, that's most important for the, the, the writer of the poetry to, to understand that I am changing my own life. But this very poem that I've just written might be able to inspire a little kid in Mexico City that struggles with Wi-Fi and then realize, oh, no, there's a kid in Irsteris in South Africa that also struggles with Wi-Fi, but they found a way to make it work. And the, the stories are, are, are the same. Um, it helps us see that there's no disconnect. Human experiences are the same, um, but also very varied as the pandemic poem showed. So globally, we all went through the same thing, COVID-19, Corona. But then you have Bonolo and you have Fazai and you have Tariro reinterpreting that experience into a poem that speaks solely of just their experience. And um, I'm really interested also in maybe asking, you know, the poets here in the house in particular, uh, um, Tariro, Fazai, Bonolo and, and, and uh, Tumelo, has this time in particular being away from, from the world as it is, you know, the, the world in its normal sense. Has that in any way influenced how you are writing or is it even changing how you are approaching the work that you are doing? Or are you starting to see the value of the work we are doing? Because I'm telling you this during this uh, pandemic, because we couldn't go anywhere else, all I had to do was read all the poetry books I've bought over the years and haven't read. And then suddenly realizing that those that I have read, I am finding new stories and I'm finding new meaning because life has changed and given me new experiences. So I would like to know from the poets themselves, um, how this, this, this time that has passed has influenced your writing and, and, and how you are consuming other people's writing. Tari? Okay, um, with, with me, honestly, I've, I've just discovered that, you know, I, um, there's a whole world out there. The world might be shut down, the world might be locked away and everything but there is a there's a whole world like you know to be discovered in books and in poetry and in everything um but i think the downside as much as i'm writing poetry as well i've come to a, a sense of appreciation that okay you know what um the the pandemic situation is actually like you know if affected the way i write and um i did go through like you know a bit of a writer's blog situation i'm still trying to navigate my way out of that as well because i feel like um pre-covid honestly like i i under i underestimated um the fact that you know with everyone out there and with the whole normal situation that was there pre-covid that's where i actually got my inspiration from you know from things that were happening in the world things that were happening around me and then came covid you know all this negative situation and it's like okay um what do i have to write about, except the fact that I'm suffocating, except the, the fact that, you know, um, I, I wanted something else, I wanted a fairy tale, and now I've got something else that is not like a fairy tale, you know? So it, it kind of has impacted my writing in that way and in that sense. And also on the flip side, I do appreciate more the fact that, you know, I'd, um, like what you guys have basically said, that, you know, what poetry is very important and um, it has the power to change the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tumelo, what do you think, brother? Um, well, with me, um, um, or basic going back, just to echo what you said, um, I on, I also believe that art, like or poetry, 
doesn't necessarily change the world. It can start conversations amongst people and people have the power to change the world, you know? And, but for me, um, writing uh, during the time of COVID, it was more of an exercise in, uh, in self-love, if I can say, and basically self-exploration self and just basically, because you, you, in a way, you were literally forced to sit with yourself, you know, and sit with all your thoughts without um, there being the outside world to, to, to disturb you or take you out of that. So I found myself writing more intimate poems, more, more love poems, um, poems about the lack thereof, love. Um, so basically I can say it hasn't necessarily changed the way I write. It has almost um, encouraged me to write more about um, what I feel inside instead of looking outside because I feel as though if I can deal with myself and if I can work through um, the, internal, the, the internal battles that I go through, I can be able to face the world more honestly and I believe that's where the power of poetry and art lies, you know, just giving us an opportunity to like actually see ourselves. So um, if I can just like encapsulate um, what writing during the process, uh, during the period of COVID into one word, it would be meditation. That would be the word I would pick. So yeah, that's, that's essentially what it is and what it was for me. And yeah, mm. thanks. Lovely, nice. I, I like the idea of, of, of journeying inwards again, you know? So um, that's, that's, that's a really interesting point you raised there, um, Tumela. Padai, how has poetry changed for you? I know you and I uh, have a, a, a poetry WhatsApp situation where you send me poems and I listen and I'm like, oh, this is amazing, oh no. <laughs> and and I, I find that um, you are someone that's constantly writing and constantly asking for, um, for feedback on your writing as well, which is a very important thing you need to do. But how much of, of the outside influence, you know, so like someone like an editor, for instance, or like an experience with, with a friend or a partner or a parent outside, how much of that is reflected in the poetry that you've been writing recently? Um, I'm actually one with Timelo in what he said. So prior to COVID, I used to get my inspiration from out, the outside world, you know, going mm. to class, you know, I'd hear someone's poem and I'd be like, wow, I need to look at life from that perspective, you know, see the beauty of life from pain and see the beauty in the pain, the growth that comes with it. Um, but now when I was now locked down for three months, you know, I had less interaction with people. And like Dumelo, it forced me to really now slow down because life was going very fast prior to COVID. Um, it forced me to really slow down and ask, who am I, you know? Um, mm -hmm. I really going as a writer you know um why do I write the way I do and for me I started realizing that I started when I was a writer or prior to COVID when I would write prior to COVID um I would write poetry putting myself in the shoes of someone else and I would tell their story and narrate what they're going through as if it is me but now when I didn't have an engagement with those people I started listening to my thoughts more often and um I think Poetry healed me because I had scars I didn't even know I, I had, you know, and I believe that um, this this time that we went through allowed me to really become a more honest writer as well and um, mm. to become a more um, real writer, you know, to really just show me on paper. And yeah, it really pushed me um, in that perspective, yeah. Mm. Lovely. Um, I want to extend the um, ambassador, if you would allow me. I would love to extend the, the next question to Cynthia Rojo and um, Bonolo. I want to know, in particular, uh, what do they think the voice of, 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 I don't want to say their generation, but their, their geographical placement, the way they find themselves. 
what poetry is coming out of there? What are we, what are we hearing? Bonolo, what do you think the South African poet's voice sounds like? You know, the under 25 just finding their voice, but also being really militant, unfiltered, thinking that every anything anti-establishment is the way to go um, as it goes with younger folks. <laughs> but uh, I would like to extend this question to the three of you, Rojo, Cynthia, and Bonolo. What do you think um, your counterparts are writing about? And, 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 and are we, are we speaking in a unified voice or is this something that we are also trying to find? Oh. Okay. <laughs> Actually, I was, I, I was waiting the ambassador to start, but... <laughs> oh. <laughs> I said the yes. first, Forgive me. <laughs> first ambassador. <laughs> uh -huh. I'm sorry, she's frozen on my screen, so... I can't really see oh, her there, but Ambassador, if you, were, if you want okay. to go. No, no, no. I want to hear you. That you're the important okay. people. Ah, okay, okay. Ah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> or do you want to start? Ah, okay, okay. So, yeah, right now, poetry. Uh, yeah, actually, I saw your videos. I don't know if you saw our ours. So <laughs> that's important. Huh? Talking about exchange. Uh, I already mm. saw yours. And uh, yeah, I saw the edition, I saw the, the language, I mean the language, the audiovisual language, and I think it's necessary. Sadly, we got uh, the empire right next to us, and he is like another planet, and he's always like a horrible bully since like right. 300 years ago. And he is like, uh, the, the empire is blocking all the information uh beyond uh, the ocean so actually for example it's very important to hear your voices because here in mexico uh we don't have so many information about africa in general about africa how africa in general is doing during the pandemic it's like all the news are about the us about europe about latin america but uh, for example here in mexico we don't know we don't know about uh, your struggle. So right now, mm. hearing your voices is fundamental. So please mm. just send me, send me more videos because actually since 2009, I got a, a, a Facebook group with a lot of uh, slam poets from all over Mexico and all over the world. So if you want to uh, send me more of your poems, uh, it will be great to generate uh, a larger bridge because we really need to hear more from, uh, from Africa, uh, directly from Africa. No, mm. actually, because in Mexico, we are like two years ago, like, or one year ago, we are starting to know about the Afrodescent Mexicans. That's mm. really, really, really strong. But that's the level of our blindness with Africa. Mm. It's like, we don't know the other roots that we got, that is the African root. Uh, that actually genetically we got more uh, genetical material from Africa through Spain actually that, that's the scientific uh, point of view we can talk about that later but definitely culturally Africa is in our cultural death definitely I mean with hip-hop with salsa with uh, with cumbia you know with all mm. the music it's definitely in Mexico it's part of our identity but we really need more from you we really need to hear more from you so this is i think this is like i will hope that this is like the beginning of a larger bridge because we really again we need we really need to hear more from you directly from you and mm. continue with this idea thank you rojo thank you rojo i let rojo First, because it's something important. I need to hear you more because I don't know about your poetry. Indeed, like I see the videos and and it's like oh wow, Quas and Bonolo and Tar I I don't know about your poetry and so I'm I'm gonna say the same thing that Rojo Cordova. Like we want to know more because we are um, gestores and, and we are like. Uh, we do a spoken word, but organize events or virtual slams, slams virtuales, 
about other poets in the world. So uh, it will be wonderful that your voices can be here with us and we can invite you. So <laughs> it will be great. And so um, about the poems, about the videos, uh, I love this. I, I love the videos because I do some some. Uh, hice algunos videos también eh, durante la pandemia, eh, y me gustó la imagen de um, video poem, poem visual poem, like a video, visual poem. You can hear the words and you see the words in in, in imágenes, ¿no? Tú lo ves como si fuera una danza. Entonces, it's a meditation for me, your videos and your poetry. It's like a meditation. I see it and, and I feel like a breath, like, like slow and something like that. Uh -huh. I, I feel something that we need in, in, in these times, that is breathe and um, uh, a, a harm, something, something, that can, algo que nos pueda contener, algo que nos pueda abrazar, ¿no? Necesitamos un, una especie de arrullo, entonces hay, creo que su poesía es un arrullo, es algo interior, es algo sí. cálido, es algo que te abraza, ¿no? Y es un proceso que estábamos viviendo durante la pandemia, ¿no? Y que tiene que ver justo con el self-love, like, I'm gonna give me love with poetry and give love to the world with my poetry, with I feel, with my love for the world, like, like that. And, and um, thank you for being here. Like, I'm excited with your voices and, 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 and I'm excited to learn about you, about all, all of you guys, all of your poets. <laughs> thank you. Oh, That's, what I think. That's what I think. Ponola, <laughs> <laughs> do you want to, um... Maybe just give us what you think your, your your reflection is rather of the voices we are hearing in poetry and uh, what it is you are drawn to. Um, okay, I don't know if I'll be answering your question, but I'm just gonna answer based on what I've been hearing. Um, so I, I personally, I have, um, how can I say, like experienced um, poetry from like international poets before. Um, I, I once attended Poetry Africa, which is like this uh, poetry event in Africa where international poets come through. So, but it's also, it's always nice to like expand and hear, you know, more poetry from different places and other different languages. Like even if we don't hear, like I don't hear Cynthia, but you can see from her reaction, but like she's angry now or she's happy. So like poetry communicates, like she was saying, you know, in more than just words so expanding you know it's always a good thing you know just kind of mm. getting poetry from different places i don't know if i'm answering your question but this is no, my answer no you are <laughs> <laughs> you are i think i think we all agree that um there are so many different voices telling so many sometimes of the same stories in different ways you know and it's, it's lovely to to be able to experience um the same scenario in different voices. And like you said, Rojo, um, the best way to experience Africa and the best way to experience any country really that you don't know is by speaking to the people directly. Um, and the art is usually a, a nice way in as an entry point to start the conversations. And then you can start picking the things that you are interested in and then um, you know, opening your mind a little more to, to, to the country. And I think that's what we will do going forward as well. Um, Cynthia and Rojo is check out your work and see what it is you are talking about and um, how uh, it connects to what it is we are doing over here. Yeah. Ambassador? Lovely. I'm so happy to, to, to see you exchanging your views, your experiences, all these beautiful words that I wrote that you were mentioning, community, love, getting close, language, body, images, sounds, self-exploration, sitting with oneself, beauty of life interaction, what do I write, poetry heals. All these, I, I will keep these for me uh, after this uh, uh, fantastic, uh, wonderful experience. But uh, just to start closing, uh, I see that now you are connected, stay connected. That would be my advice, stay connected, exchange, talk more, raise your voices, share, 
uh, invite uh, yourself to to a tour to your space your own space virtually we can do that vir virtually and when it's possible physically i'm sure that you have to meet each other i don't know when but sometime we need to bring more south africa to mexico more mexico to south africa that's evident this is a way to do that through you through your wonderful job uh, now just to 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 close because we need to close uh, this um uh, wonderful uh, encounter reunion i would like to ask each of you to say in one word or two words max what does the title of the festival poetry will save us mean to you let's start with um mexico <laughs> yeah with cynthia <laughs> Hey, la bolita. Yeah. Ay, 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 ay. Pulque. Ah. I, need, I need meditation for this question. Um, woo, la pandemia nos salvará. No, sí, la pandemia. Sí, sí. La poesía. La, 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 poesía. la poesía. Perdón, la poesía. La, la pandemia ya. Perdón, la poesía. Es, pero no es que en el, el virus también se te mete en la vacuna y te salva, entonces. Exacto. La, es por la, la vacuna. vacuna. Gracias, gracias, uh, Rob, gracias. Doing Mexican jokes, excuse me. Yeah. Jokes. <laughs> Sorry. We are more nervous than, the, than you. You're very relaxed, but I'm like, oh, wow. Oh yeah, don't <laughs> worry. It, it's like poetry, poetry, poetry. Poetry about poetry. Yes, poetry. Yes, because <laughs> it's about my words are my words are ternura radical. We talk ah. here like uh, like ternura radical. We said Good. that word, and I like because radical I, I think the tenderness. Poetry, That's a one. Yes, and what what do you what do you think, Rosa Cordova? <laughs> I think uh, right now I'm feeling like in the middle of Mad Max Fury Road in Mexico. <laughs> Have you seen that movie? <laughs> we are just like that. <laughs> so, so how we are going to survive? Yeah, poetry, but also emulating the guys from Mad Max Fury Road. So that, okay. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I, Yep. That's provocative enough. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Thank you. Gracias, Rojo. Okay, who, who wants to, to start on the South African side? Fatsai. Yes, um, I would say um, Poetry Will Save Us to me says a new type of revolution, you know, um, where we are no longer really depending on guns and violence to really change how people think, but looking at it in a more creative way of rather persuading each other to seeing how life is for me, how it can influence the next person. So I'd say revolution is the word. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Fatsa. Who's next? Who wants to take the floor? I'll go next. I'll go next. Um, so when I hear, uh, you know, poetry will save us, I think um, poetry will save us not just like as a coping mechanism to go through things, but also like giving us, you know, a sense of sanity and peace also through everything. So not just like, you know, coping mechanism, but also just like a relaxation, peace. Mm -hmm. and yes. <laughs> Good. Good. Carabo. Um, so, I mean, I love the name of the festival that poetry will save the world. And really the first thing that I, that I thought of was poetry will save the world, but art will save lives, you know, and, um, it's really, it's poetry is one form of expression to save the world. But, but as artists, we are 
the work we do is spiritual. I know I keep saying spiritual, 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 because really mm -hmm. it is gifts that we hold within ourselves and the power that we have to heal the world. Art is the one thing that everybody consumes, you know? Not everybody needs an accountant, not everybody needs a lawyer, but everybody needs to listen to music. Everybody watches movies, everybody, you know? And it's so sad because it's the one thing that people take for granted. And I think as artists, we learned that it was a painful lesson we learned in South Africa, you know, that, you know, we, in terms of the food chain and priorities, we are not on top of that food chain. But what people didn't realize is that what got them through the lockdown was all the art they consumed, mm -hmm. different types of art, you know, and whether they like it or not, we will save their lives. We, we continue to save their lives. You know, poetry will save the world just like art saves lives. Those are my words. That's a, yeah, I love that. I love that poetry and art will save us. Mm. Daddy, you wanted to say something. Daddy. Yes, um, I just wanted to say that, you know, when I actually hear the theme, poetry will save the world, um, the, the, the two words that I can just say that I associate with this theme is based basically that you know it's just the vision it's, it's visionary honestly like you know this theme is very visionary i would say that it's the goal honestly for poetry to save the world and i think in a way i kind of disagree but i agree with what people were saying basically i think it was because i was basically saying that poetry will not save the world but poetry will save an individual but that's really to say that you know if poetry can save each and every individual that's out there in the world is that not saving the world i feel like that is so yeah good wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> i hate i hate that she's right <laughs> <laughs> i think you're right daddy <laughs> yeah. um, so my two words is and then so and poetry then. will save the world and then what do we do after that you know we can write the most beautiful poems about everything that's happening but once the yeah. poem is written, we roll up our sleeves and we do the physical work of making the world better. And like Karabo said, healing happens in different ways, but we are constantly healing, either ourselves or those around us. So I think that's always the question and we need to ask ourselves after every piece of work we've done, what next? What is the next step to, to bring this message home? And I think that's, um, that's a question we need to ask ourselves here as well when we log out here and then. I'm linking with Cynthia, I'm linking with Rojo, I'm linking with Tumelo, I'm calling Carabo, I'm calling Bonolo, I'm gonna call the ambassador. We, and then what is the next step? Let's, let's preoccupy ourselves with movement and perpetual movement and bettering. So the next step is always towards bettering ourselves and bettering our environment and the people around us. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. so we can have another chapter for, for this discussion. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're, you're uh, the last one, but not the, not the least. So, oh. Uh, uh, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, but poetry will save the world, to me, tells me that um, human beings still possess hope. And mm -hmm. as long as a human being possesses hope, I feel like the world still has the the, the 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 possibility of being a better place so i think hope is the single most important thing that a human being can possess and poetry will save the world to me sounds like hope so yeah that's basically my word hope wonderful it's been really a pleasure for me. I, I really enjoyed this conversation, this gathering. Uh, I, I really thank you very much. Gracias, gracias, gracias. As we say in Spanish, I enjoyed it. So let's uh, think about performing, writing, listening, dancing, uh, TikToking, uh, videos, whatever means uh, to communicate between you, among yourselves, that's the best. And love, 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 yes, love, love, radical love. <laughs> bye. <laughs> bye. Bye. Bye, bye. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.